information. You have control of it, you drive the deal. The other side has control of it, you take it from them. It's like a game of global marbles. Information passes from hand to hand. Stolen, given, traded, misplaced, found. The kid who has the most marbles at the end of the game wins. Simple. My name is Andrew Sterling. My game is over. Nothing now. No deals then. Uh huh. I guess. Consider it clean. At six. Okay. Be seeing you. We've got him. Uh huh. Cleaned six months ago by MI6. Thorough job as well. The English spooks couldn't get to the authority records. Only reason we got him. Kim's on it. I'm expecting delivery within the next few days. You know she will. They've got history. He'll be as good as gold. Aye. No, no identity, no family, no records. Our man doesn't exist. Invisible and perfectly disposable. Kim will scrub any remaining records on the way out. 
Sure he'll do it. We've just come even again and he's clean out of options. Aside from retirement, we're as good as it gets. Farik? No, no sign of him. I've been scouring all reports, but nothing. Typically greasy. I'll send them after Salah. Should rattle the cage enough to turn something out. Aye, okay, until then. One! Where's the transport? A barge, waiting on a stretch of canal, about a hundred yards from here. The captain's waiting to take you on. We'll split there for safety. What about you? Alternative plans. I'll RV with you in Hong Kong. This is it. What's my cover? Oh, you'll love this, you really will. You're a dead man. Wah! Oh. Get some rest. See you in Hong Kong. In 1935, H.G. Wells wrote The Shape of Things to Come, where the world is saved from the horrors of post-war destruction by a group of aviators calling themselves Wings Over the World. A boy who read that book in London in 1935 saw the film version in 1937 and was enthralled. He was barely an adult when the war came, but that didn't matter to him, nor to an increasingly desperate Britain. The war came hard, just as it did in the book. But H.G. Wells did not imagine nuclear bombs or death camps. And so the boy became a pilot, found that there were to be no wings over the world, and that the shocked post-war world was a very cold place indeed. Your move, sleeping beauty. Oh, Jesus, Danny, you don't give up, do you? Two weeks now and you've lost how many games? You always were a terrible chess player, but fuck, these days. <laughs> Come over here and sit down, bastard. I'm letting you in to aid recuperation, like. Ugh, I don't know. The thanks I get. My company for three weeks. Thanks enough, I'd say. So, what are you going to do now then, Kasparov? Now you're all mended and fit. Back to rainy days in London. Bit of bodyguard work. Or lecture on security here and there. Uh, dunno. Though I might grow a bone beard like yours, get myself sorted with a pipe and slippers, grow old, fat and lazy by the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Christ, Andy, you may as well throw yourself off the balcony right now. We hard men like us aren't engineered to sit still waiting for death, monkey fingers or no monkey fingers. And those are some seriously fucking monkey fingers. The boy had issues. Clearly. Andy, I'm doing well here, man. Things are good. Seriously good. Didn't get this by chance, you know. Didn't get this smoking backy in a working man's club in Hastings. On my ass getting hemorrhoids as life passed me by. What are you offering, Danny? I have more work on than I can handle at the moment. Much more work. I want you in, man. This game's getting longer the tooth, Danny. I passed my shelf life ten years ago. I mean, you can't want to go on much longer. You've got to give up at some point. I can't, Annie. I've no option. This is important. 
really important. Say I cut you a standard 10%. 10%? Fuck. Come on, Danny, don't insult me. Not after all this time. Not now. Manky fingers or no manky fingers. Look at this fucking place. 15%. I want 50%. Plus that 5 mil you still owe me from Cartagena. Cartagena? Huh. <laughs> 20%. And the 5 mil. 25% and the 5 mil gets you a deal. You're a bastard. You know that, don't you? On completion, I'll need papers, a Swiss deposit account, and an expense account. Sort me out an offshore as well, will you? Something nice and quiet and on an island somewhere. Steady margaritas in the sun. Okay, you've got it. You got it. Deal, man. Deal. Don't suppose SIS left much of me lying around? What do you think? You're as dead as they come. Funeral, honors and all. It's an easy job. Nice easy job. Look after Kim on a hit in Africa. Bit of intelligence collection. Nothing too dramatic. More detail will be given to you en route. It's good to see you, Andy. Good luck. You'll need it. A man got you, pig. You look like shit. If I was there, I bet you'd smell like shit as well. Fizzy scab. I hope you're not making a mess of things while I'm away. All is quiet, Mahmoud, so you can get off my back. Sounds like some of the men are getting overexcited in the old town, but nothing out of the ordinary, you know. That is stinking rats. I shoot them myself if they damage my statue. How's the work coming on around the cafe? Well, the last time I checked good, the carpenter's complaining that his scaffolding's rotten, but... When doesn't that man complain? I cut his tongue out myself if he complains again. It's fit. Fit, I'm at cut. You fucking tell him that. After the catastrophe last week, I'm surprised he has the balls to show his face. I'll pass on your most sincere appreciation of his hard work and tireless endeavors to please you. So tell me, how are things there, my friend? As you can see, things are coming together beautifully. This will be a fine event. A fine event. What the fuck are you doing, you crazy? I told you to be careful with that. Oh, so sorry, sir. Sorry? Sorry? You worthless piece of shit! Give me your gun. Sir, I... Give me your fucking gun! Fucking maggot! Emmett Cut, I apologize for the interruption. As you can see, apart from the odd wrinkle in need of a hot iron, things are coming together nicely. <laughs> that is octopus, I take it. Four units of sublime engineering. Our clients will be most happy. <laughs> most happy. The Russian twins? On their way, safe and sound. They should pass through the mine within the next day. To now, more to come. Here's better news still. Payment has made our account. Your backer certainly keeps his word. Half? Half. The full 50%. Wonderful. <laughs> I'll pass on my thanks when we speak later. How's the mining operation? Is the delivery ready? On its way to you, my friend. On its way. I knew I could rely on you, Amengard. Well done. You know the drill, though. Any hiccups, any problems, and I want to know about it. Hear me? I, I hear you, Mahmoud. I hear you. Don't fuck up now, my friend. Any problems, any at all. A any at all? Any at all? Okay. Uh, we speak again in six hours. You don't hear from me, you know something's come up. Keep wise. Six hours, my friend. Out.
In 1952 in Switzerland, there was a meeting of a very select group of men drawn from the various military disciplines active during the war, and this is what was said. We are now in the midst of what they're calling a Cold War. This is an immense game of chess, where the two superpowers tamper with the countries in between them to alter the overall balance of power. The two superpowers have nuclear weapons. So do some of their chess pieces. More will have them soon. In 60 years' time, there will be 6 billion people on Earth. More than half of them will live in abject poverty, and poverty breeds war. These men who had fought and survived World War II looked at each other and said, here is the evidence. We will not survive World War III. We will not have the luxury of bringing our wisdom to its aftermath, for everyone on Earth will already be dead. This is John Gray, who had thrilled to H.G. Wells' pointed fable of the future, and these were his wings over the world. Are you? Please don't kill me. I need the blueprints to the compound. I can't give you those. Salah will cut my tongue out. The plans, or I'll get there well before him. Where are they? All right, all right. Now, please. Leave me! Waiting. Being in the SAS trains you for it. Times when you're still for hours, sometimes days on end. Waiting. For a contact that might never come. For a clean shot that doesn't present itself. Waiting. For a signal to move. Back in the regiment, I was one of the most highly trained waiters in the world. Over 500k a year of the taxpayers hard-earned to train people to sit still and do fuck all. I've sat in the same cafe at the same time for a week on the trot, only to find out my boy's been slotted three blocks away in a fight over a tart. In the gulf, I slept in a wadi next to bags of my own shit and piss for a week, watching endless frontline deliveries, only to get a recall. Normally it's okay. I don't mind. It's what I get paid to do. Be patient. But if there's one thing I can't fucking stand, it's waiting for someone else to do a job I know I could do better. Quicker. With less collateral. Oh shit. Kim? Hello, little mouse. And what are you doing in my house? Kim? 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 Shit! Hold on. The SAS. The Special Air Service. Britain's elite. Second thing they teach you is what the letters really mean. Speed. Aggression. Surprise. First thing they teach you, you don't quit on your mates. Ever.
Delta 1, this is Delta 2. I have two X-rays wiring high X. Alpha 1, building evac. Repeat, building evac. We'll wait and observe. On my signal. Over. Roger that, Delta 2. Moving to your position. Man, you look like a bag of bollocks. Let's get you out of here. You twat, you could have... You owe me five mil. You don't think I was going to let that go up in flames? You tight fucking twat. Sure you're not Scottish? <laughs> No, no! Understand, Simpleton. Now! Not tomorrow, not next week. Now! I will see to it, Mr. Salah. That comment felt depressingly familiar. Uh, forgive me if I cast doubt on your unique abilities. You have moved the little runt, yes? She is secure. Send her to me at the mine. When you finally get him, kill him. Make a really big fucking mess. Mahmoud is going to be very unhappy about his club. Get this right, and we may keep our lives. We have a problem. Someone is trying to fuck this whole thing up for us. Tell me the shipment's gone. Batches 1 and 3 are complete. Batches 4 to 8 are still in manufacturing. I want them out of here before midday tomorrow. No letter. We're pushing it as it is, sir. 
Manufacturing can't afford to push any harder. Understand that, like I, they have no choice here. They push, yes. I miss this a lot. Stop! Once we are down, I want mortar teams in position 24 hours, yes? Yes, Mr. Salah. We have mines? Some on their way to the... Uh... Yeah, I, I want this road mined. Don't spare them. Up and down, see? Up and down! We'll get on it, sir. Let's go. Oh, thought you'd forgotten about me. Kim, I'm sorry. Shh, it's not your fault. You've been in touch with Danny. He wants us to see out the mission. No exfil. He's insistent, in fact. But this job means a lot more to him than he's letting on, you know. Very much the impression I got. Let's get out of here. You can tell me where we're going as you drive. Just be careful. You don't forget, do you? The world had to be saved from itself too many times in the next ten years. John Gray and his secret wings were not yet ready. The world had to be held back from the brink by other means. There were too many variables to be calculated, too many plans to be tested and modified, too many cold, hard truths to be faced. Flags and nations meant nothing to graze wings. They took a broader view. The enemy was, quite simply, Everyone. Kim 我们一直在观察你不过他以前做过我们从学校照拼向我们一样的人
，你们会教我什么？我们会教你机遇时刻，辨别所有事情的可能性。在你的周围，没有人会是安全的。我会不会保护人们，像警察所应该做的？你将保护中国的安全。不受人民喝酒，唯有牧民做的为邪，那是特无所谓护的护母。谁知道我在这里？没有人，甚至连我们的领导也不知道。我们不在这里，你明白吗？这样方便一些。万一我们的队会精心的，不太顺利的话。我再也见不到我的亲人了，但是，他们讲是安全的。Actually, looks like an old mining operation. Didn't have Salah down as the Golden Gulch type. All appearances can be deceptive. That's what worries me. Wait here. No way am I staying here. You're in no condition for contact, Kim. You'd get in the way. Not in that, I wouldn't. You move in on foot and see if you can locate intel on the facility. I'll see if I can't get an aerial view on this. You're an impossible young lady. You really are. But you've got to love me. You really have. Come on, hero. We have orders. Great. By 1977. The secret society, now known as Grey Wings, had settled on one course of action, one awful plan that, by turn, chilled and fascinated its quiet army of members. John Grey had lost his wife twice, first to estrangement, and then to cancer. His child was a stranger, a small ghost encountered at holidays, to be sent gifts that Grey would never see opened. Life was something that happened to other people. His business had become death.
His days were full of three terms and the horror that orbited them. Mutually assured destruction, nuclear winter, and the worst of all, dieback. His nights were full of the knowledge that dieback was his future. By 1981, work had begun on Winterlong. His only prayer was that he would never have to go there. This is it. That canyon we passed 3K south of here. I'm on it. I picked up one or two bits you may find useful. They're in the back. Once I'm down, find somewhere well away from here to land. We'll remain in radio contact. Got it. Ready? Let's do it. And here she is, gentlemen. One of the finest acquisitions my modest operation has made recently. A beautiful piece of machinery, I'm sure you will agree. The Soviet T-90S. Top of the range merchandise and available to you at a most reasonable price. <laughs> a little try before you buy, perhaps. In late 1999, John Gray was contacted by his estranged son. He was getting married and decided that he wanted his father there. It was strange for John Gray. He found himself unexpectedly elated in being out in the real world again, being part of real things. His son's wife was beautiful. He wept at the ceremony. Later at the reception, he heard people commenting how sweet it was that the old man was so moved. They didn't know, couldn't know, John Gray was crying because his plan to save the human race would almost inevitably kill his son and his new wife. Project Cold Winter was set for 2003. In 2002, his granddaughter was born. John Gray sat with his baby granddaughter and told her a story, the only person he could tell. He told her about Cold Winter. I told her about Cold Winter. Okay. Dieback is when a species is decimated back to sustainable levels. In the case of the human race, we estimate this to be some 600 million people worldwide. We planned and debated and calculated for decades, my darling little girl. And we concluded that humanity must be made to fall on its own sword. We determined that the detonation of selected nuclear stockpiles in a specific pattern would induce nuclear winter. Millions of tons of dust would be thrown into the atmosphere, blocking out the sun. In our scenario, nuclear winter would freeze out the world for 30 years, leaving a base population of 600 million. Then the sun would break through. The detonation sites would, of course, still be uninhabitable, but the world is a big place, little girl. And the people who are left would be pathologically afraid of nuclear devices. Cold winter. I could save the world, but I can't save you. And I think I've been living in a cold world too long. Freak. 
So, my friends, you have checked this device over. It is safe. As far as we are able to tell, perfectly, sir. That would be a yes, then. Grey wings. Ha! Not smarter than Mahmoud al Farik. Hmm. We have a guest. See to it. Ah, my friends. Thank you for your patience. And so, to the highlight of my little fair. A system so advanced, friends. So advanced and... Uh, technological. <laughs> that even the Western superpowers have yet to lay their hands on it. Through contacts unique to Farik and Ctech Enterprises. I am very proud to give you the incredible Octopus. The details and specifications you all know. This information you have. Now, look at the quality. Admire the manufacturing. Witness the... Mr. Farik, a demonstration perhaps. <laughs> ah, yes. A demonstration! <laughs> A demonstration! Fuck! You have to be realistic about these things. You have to keep your perspective. I've seen too much death to be any other way. I've held the hardest men in the world in my arms. Seen them crying like babies, feeling themselves slipping away. Knowing in that moment that no one is going to save them. That there's no salvation. That the blood draining from their wounds is the last real thing they will feel. And I know, above anything else, that the moment the eyes shut, the last suck of air, gulped down and pushed out. There is nothing left of the person you knew. Parish. Get me the fuck out of here. We're on it, Andy. Nice work. Let the birds have her. Let her rot and decompose and feed the earth. She'd have wanted that. A hole in the ground is no place for one like that. No end to a life like that. Grey Wings had long established themselves in Winterlong, a secure place where we would wait out nuclear winter. It was here that I was shown the way to save the world. Kill it. The Octopus module was ostensibly a highly advanced missile guidance system. Upon activation, however, it hooked into a satellite system that spoke to Winterlong's own mainframe computers. This was the first octopus module. They took time to make, 
The plan was eventually to sell several such modules to mostly emergent and a select few existent nuclear powers at arms fairs. No one power would know another had octopus. Our secret. Our Pandora's box. Octopus would be connected to, in the ideal scenario, a minimum of eight nuclear missile systems. More, if possible. On command from Winterlong, Octopus would take over the firing systems they were linked to and detonate the nuclear warheads in their silos. Korea wanted one along with nuclear warheads with which to accelerate their weapons program, the aim being to bring pressure to bear on America. Pakistan expressed an interest, as did Britain, where my baby granddaughter is. Is this seat taken? Knock yourself out. Thank you. A friend? Yes. A very pretty young lady, if I may say so. She was. Ah, uh, was. Yes. I'm so sorry, Mr. Sterling. How do you know my name? A beautiful place, Prague, don't you think? I came here first after the war, you know. Fell in love with it, and a handful of Czech women. I drank absinthe in the bars, walked the Charles Bridge. I was also romantic, deep down, somewhere, I suppose. How do you know my name? A wonderful place for rest and recuperation. Danny was right to send you here. Quite the spot. Convenient I was here as well, convenient. Yes. I had a vision, you know. A dream of a better world. A more secure world. Man. <laughs> we simply can't be trusted with anything, can we? Give us power unlimited, and we have to see what will happen, don't we? We have to break it to see if we can fix it. That's our way, our design. We never can, you know. It's never the same. Who are you? Who am I? Hmm. A wonderful question. <laughs> In how many different ways I could answer that? To you? I am Danny's employer, so to speak. At least, the man who's been funding him for the past 13 years, paying for that lovely mansion in Hong Kong. I'm very tired. Who am I? Once head of an organization called Grey Wings, father of Octopus, a stupid old man who thought a pointed fable could become reality. In this envelope are details of a place, a job, a final mission, if you like, that appeals to my sense of cliché. You make a success of it, You'll never have to work again. You fail it, a few of us will be around to care. Open the package, read the information, listen, absorb, then decide. Why should I trust you? What in hell makes you think I can trust you, anyone? Kim, the girl, this woman, I saved her. Me, she's dead now. Why should I trust you? My dear boy, in no way, shape, or form should you ever trust me. It really is your choice. Who are you? I was John Gray.
I wish you luck, Mr. Sterling. I really do. You'll certainly need it.
Get it over with, you pieces of shit. The decisions we make stay with us for life. By the warmth of the fire as the carriage clock ticks, we reflect on the life we have led. Some of it good, some of it not so good. But it's all ours, all of it, in the end. <laughs> 